Okay. Bruchem Aboim. Today our lecture is going to deal with uh, a very important topic, the concept of time. And uh, really, time directs every facet of our life, from birth to death, sports, religion, business, travel, day and night, seasons. And it really boils down to what we can call time management, being able to deal with time in a proper way, respect of time, utilization of time. There's a story told of uh, two young men that were in studying in Jerusalem. And they had a break between classes and they had to do some banking. And they decided that they would uh, run to the bank, take care of the business, and then come back afterwards so they wouldn't miss any of their classes. And when they got to the bank, they found that there was a long line and they realized that there was no way that if they got into the line, in the back of the line, that, that they would be able to get back in time. So what they decided to do <clears throat> was take cuts. So they looked at the line to try to figure out where would be the place where they could slip in and kind of cause the least amount of concern and take care of their business. So they saw an old Jew kind of hunched over on his cane. And they figured, perfect place. And they nonchalantly uh, stepped in front of him. <clears throat> and to their amazement, <clears throat> and when they did that, the old man began to, began to scream. A very loud voice wrote, Seach, wrote Seach, which means murderer, murderer. <laughs> and the boys kind of chuckled. And they turned to this old man and they said, we took cuts, but wrote Seach, a murderer. Actually, they were carrying this a little bit too far. And the old man with a very stern face said, no, you are a murderer. And they said, how do you figure? And he said, when someone kills someone else, the reason why he is put to death is because it's equal, since he stole that person's time by killing him, we take his time away. So when you stepped in front of me in this line, I'm going to have to wait longer in this line. You're stealing time from me. That makes you a murderer. And that's how important time is. We look at it, you know, can you imagine <clears throat> if you were on a uh, bus and you're going cross country and every five minutes and this bus ride, the person next to you opens up the window and throws a dollar bill out. What would you think? He's crazy, right? I mean, who does that? But if you waste five minutes out of every hour, we don't see that as anything. And that's really killing time. And that's what we use the term for, killing time. Time is such a gift. And the truth of the matter is, we see it with children, you know, we really, really take it for granted. Children run everywhere. And you wonder, what, what are they in a hurry about? But somehow they're always running. I mean, if we did that, we would be, you know, just probably dead from exhaustion, but they run. They're excited. They, they have a passion. There's something they want to do. They want to do it now. And we take our time. We kind of get slower and slower, not because of physical infirmity, just because we just don't have that zest, that desire, that, 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 that drive that the child has. The, it's interesting, they say that, well, time, when, you, when you're younger, time moves slower. And as you get older, time moves quicker, which is a fallacy. But we see it, people say that, why? Ask any child, about a summer vacation. Was it fast or slow? And he'll tell you it went by like a blink of an eye. The only reason why time goes slower for a child is he's being tested all the time when he's going to school. He's got to get up early in the morning. He's got to study. He's got to do homework. With all of that, that's why time goes slowly. But when things are good and he's having a good time, all of a sudden it moves you know, like it's supercharged. So when someone tells you that time's moving very quickly, what you need to do is smile at the person and tell them how lucky he is. That means his life is good. I promise you, when you're having misery, that clock doesn't move. It only moves when things are good. So when someone tells you time is moving quickly, it means that things are basically pretty good in his life. And he really needs to thank God for that 
predicament that he's in that is working so well. You know, it's interesting. We, we take a vacation. And we take a vacation for a week. And the first three days that we go, we're kind of relaxed. We get up a little bit late and we take our time and it's vacation. And then the fourth day kicks in and all of a sudden we realize there's only three days left. And then all of a sudden we're up bright early in the morning and we run around like a chicken with our head cut off because we only have three more days. And if you stop and think about it, what's the difference between the first three days and the last three days? And really it's perception because they're really the same. It's just all of a sudden we come to the realization the clock is ticking and we only have so much time left. And this is why it says that Abram Avinu was the first person up until Abram Avinu, Abraham's time, people hit the age of 20 and they stayed that, looked like that for the rest of their lives. Abraham, Abram Avinu was the first person to ask for old age. One of the reasons being that God made a miracle since people said that Sarah was pregnant from the kings of Avimelech when he was in her harem, his harem. So God made them look like twins. So people would talk to each one of them if they thought, thought what, they thought they were talking to Avram, they were talking to Yitzchak, thought they were talking to Yitzchak, they were talking to Avram. So it's confusing. So Avram Vino asked for old age, for a person to get wrinkles and gray hair, which is strange. But the truth of the matter is, it's the last three days. That when a person looks in the mirror and all of a sudden he sees a few wrinkles and he's getting a little bit gray, he realizes the clock is ticking. If you look in the mirror and what you would see is a young face staring back at you, you might think that you have forever. But when you look at yourself and you realize all of a sudden you're getting a little bit older that maybe it's time to do what we call a chesh ben anefesh, an accounting of the soul, kind of like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, to take an accounting and see where you are and realize that clock is ticking. How much time do you really have left? You know, one of the rabbis in Pirkei Elva said that a person should, should uh, repent one day before he dies. And his students thought it was very good, but they said, but we don't know when you're going to die, so what does that mean? And he said, exactly. So a person should repent every day. But the reason that when God gives us these wrinkles and, and gray, it's a wake-up call. That it's time to get things together. It's time to, to look, stop making the same silly mistakes you've been making. You no longer have the excuse of being young and foolish. Time has given you a bit of wisdom and utilize it. And with time, <clears throat> the Jews, you know, it takes nine months to have a baby. And when you're married and, you have a, and your wife's pregnant, you really want the baby now, <clears throat> nine months. So with time also comes this concept of patience. Things take a certain amount of time. And impatience is a problem. A person needs to utilize time. It's interesting. My wife takes the credit for everything I've ever learned. Because while I'm waiting for her, I heard a lecture one time that said, open up a book and study. So that's what I do. So she takes the credit for everything that I've learned because waiting for her, I've gone through a lot of books. But it's a matter of utilizing time. Think of all the times that we go to a, a doctor's office or you're waiting for your car to get fixed or <clears throat> whatever, an appointment. If you carry a book with you, instead of reading a nonsensical magazine, or watching some sort of silly thing on television that you didn't even choose to watch, it's just there. You open up something that has some meaning to it, something that will give you some knowledge, something that will help you grow. Why waste time? It's so precious. You know, it says that Napoleon never took a nap because he said when he took a nap, he wasn't a king. We need to realize the gift that time is. And not only that, to live in the moment. Many of us live in the past or we're so worried about what's going to happen in the future that we forget to live in the present. So we see there's a poem that says that the past is history. Future is a mystery. All we have is the present. And that's why it's called the present. It's a gift. And it's interesting, in the interpersonal relationships that we have with people, when you have an appointment with someone as a friend, but even especially in business, and 
you keep someone waiting five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's really a lack of respect. It shows that you really don't care. Imagine if someone <clears throat> were going to give you $100,000 at 9 o'clock. You might get there at 8.30. <laughs> but you're sure not going to get there at 10 after or 5 after. And you're going to worry about him being a minute late. Maybe he won't be there because he said 9 o'clock. When you have a train to catch and you come a minute after 9, the train's gone. The train leaves at 9 o'clock. But you were only a minute late. Yeah, but that minute late will make you an hour late because you're going to have to wait for the next train to get to where you have to go. So when you are on time, especially if someone knows that you're there, it means that you care. It shows a certain interest. A good employee, if a person as an employee wants to make an impression on a boss, if you're always early, right away you've made an impression. If you're always late, it makes us feel like you don't care. And it becomes a negative. And not only that, people that come late start their day off on the wrong foot. Because there's a negative feeling within them because they're not sure they're going to get in trouble, you know, who's going to say something, on and on and on. Whereas when you come early, you're ready to start. And things start well. Beginnings are so important. And by starting properly in the beginning, everything else follows behind them. God made, it's interesting, God made morning and evening. And the question is why? And the answer is religiously. There are many commandments that deal with time. Prayer, there's a certain time for prayer. After a certain time, you cannot dot pray the morning prayer or the afternoon prayer or the evening prayer. Uh, there's a time to do a circumcision. Um, there's a, the first law given to the Jewish nation was, was making the calendar. Again, time for holidays and the months. There's a time, again, for a, marital relations. There, all, of, all of Judaism, is, the Judaism revolves around time and using it. It says that Abravino, Abraham, says, Yamim, he came with his days. He could account for every second of every day. I wish that we could say that, that there's one day in our life that we actually spent the whole day doing it properly. If you ever go to a cemetery, what you see is a person lived from this year to that year, and there's a dash in between. That dash is their whole life. Everything goes to that dash. What did you do in that dash? In Mishle, it says the day of death is better than the day of birth. Why? Because the day of death is when you finished off that time and used it in a proper way. When you're born, you don't know what's going to happen. There was a rabbi, maybe Yitzchak Bardichev, who was walking home one night. And he went by the shoemaker's store. And he noticed that the shoemaker was still there. And it was dark. And he went into the store and he asked him why he was working so late. And he looked at the rabbi and he said, as long as the candle burns, why shouldn't I keep working? And the rabbi thought to himself, so are we. We're called, our soul is called a nair, a light. As long as we have an opportunity to achieve, to create, to do something, how can we waste that time? How can we kill time? Why give up that time? When we're born, that clock starts ticking. We all have only so much time, and that is the gift of life. And imagine being in a vault and having X amount of time to grab all the treasure, all the jewels, all the riches you possibly can, and you decide to take a nap. No one would do that. And if he did, you would think he was a fool. We need to remember what time is, what a gift it is, and try to use it in a way that's productive, in a way that makes us relevant, in a way that we've utilized this gift that God has given us in life to achieve that which we have to do. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a great Shabbos.